Hi guys, I'm Maggie, and today we're going to be unboxing the Prusa i3 Mark III S Plus. The Prusa i3 Mark III S Plus kit retails for $749 plus $50 shipping if you live in the U.S. It is also available fully assembled for $999 plus shipping. I opted for the kit version. The website says there is a shipping lead time of 3-4 to four weeks, which was pretty accurate. I received a confirmation email telling me my order had shipped exactly 3 weeks after placing my order, and it was on my doorstep 5 days after receiving that email. The box came in a protective plastic wrap. After removing the plastic, I got to the box containing the printer with the Prusa logo and everything on it. The box was a little beaten up at the bottom, but luckily nothing inside was damaged. I opened the box and removed all of its contents. It included several smaller boxes containing motors, 3D printed parts, rods, hardware, and electronics, as well as an assembly guide, a 3D printing handbook, and some gummy bears. One helpful tip is that the assembly guide is also available online. This online version is always fully up to date, and there are comments from people on additional tips and tricks that they found useful during their assembly process. I decided I would start by seeing what was in each box. I started with the fasteners and electronics. The box was filled with organized bags labeled for every step of the assembly guide, as well as some additional tools, a glue stick, and zip ties. Next, I opened the plastic parts set. Again, everything was nice and organized in labeled bags. Then I opened the motor kit, which contained the extruder motor, as well as the motors for the X, Y, and Z axes. Next was the large flat box, which contained the heated bed, steel sheet, and two large metal pieces that would make up the frame and Y carriage. Finally, I opened the box labeled Y axis, which, as you guessed, contained the parts for the Y axis. The first step after the introduction is the Y axis assembly. I don't want to bore you with every small detail of the assembly and make you watch me insert 5 million bolts, so I'll do a little video magic. I got all my components ready and turned this into this. The next or third step is the x-axis assembly. Again, I laid out all of my components on the table and followed the assembly guide to turn this into this. The fourth step is the z-axis assembly, which allowed me to take my newly assembled x-axis and mount it out to my y-axis using these additional components. One of the things I really like about this printer and would like to note is its sturdy build. In addition to having the two threaded rods that control the Z-axis movement, there are an additional two smooth rods to further improve stability and Z-axis alignment. Now that we've assembled the three axes and main frame of the printer, we will assemble the extruder, or E-axis assembly as the guide refers to it. As the assembly guide warned, this was by far the most difficult and time-consuming step of the process for me. But in the end, I was able to take all of these components and turn them into a functional extruder mounted on my x-axis. The sixth step is the LCD assembly. The LCD screen itself comes packaged nicely in a separate protective pouch, keeping it nice and safe during shipping. After a bit of work, I was able to turn this into this. It was really starting to feel like the printer was coming together. The next to last step of actual assembly is the heat bed and PSU assembly. Like the LCD screen, the power supply unit and the heat bed came nicely wrapped in bubble wrap to protect them during shipping. Following the instructions, I first assembled the heat bed and then the PSU. The very last step is the electronics assembly. Like the LCD screen, PSU, and heat bed, the motherboard came packaged extra well. Again, even though my large box did take some damage during shipment, the packaging within it was great and everything was in perfect condition when I opened it. After a bit of struggling, I was able to get everything wired. The guide was really great about wire management and keeping everything organized and clean. After a few seconds of assembling the spool holder, my printer was fully assembled. Then it was time for the moment of truth to see if I wired everything correctly. Once it's on, the printer will prompt you to start the self-test. This test will make sure you assembled everything correctly and it's functioning properly. First, it will test the extruder fan, print fan, 
X, Y, and Z axes, bed, and hot end. Next, it will do the X, Y, Z calibration, starting with Z. First, it will ask you to make sure the nozzle is clean. Once you confirm it is, it will ask you if the steel sheet is on the heat bed. If it is, it will ask you to remove it. Next, it will ask you to place a piece of paper on the print bed. It will then test four different points using the PINDA. Then, it will ask you to replace the metal sheet and begin testing nine points. It will do this nine point test before every print to make sure everything is still aligned and intact. If everything is good to go, you'll see this message on your screen. If this or any other tests fail, you can consult the handbook that comes with the printer to see how to resolve the issue. Next, the printer will ask if any filament is currently loaded. I didn't have any, so I selected no. It will then ask you to select the nozzle preheat temperature that matches the material you'll be inserting. There's a list of preloaded filaments and temperatures to choose from. Once you've selected one, the nozzle will begin to preheat. Once this is finished, follow the instructions on the screen to insert your filament into the extruder. Once you confirm that the filament is extruding with the correct color, you'll get this message. And you're ready to print. The printer came with an SD card preloaded with several pre-sliced files to get you started. I chose Benchy. Here's a time lapse of my very first print. Overall, the quality is pretty good. There are several things about this printer that I'm particularly impressed with. The first is the flexible magnetic print bed, which allows for easy removal of finished prints. Next is the auto calibration, which ensures a near perfect first layer every print and continual reliability. Another really great feature is the crash detection, which alerts you if any of your motors skip. This allows you then to go back and see the failure stats of your print later on. Another feature that comes in really handy is the power failure backup, which can really save you if you lose power in the middle of a lengthy print. With this feature, if your printer loses power, it will pick up right where it left off once it is booted back up again. Overall, I'm really impressed with this printer. To find out more information about this printer, as well as some articles comparing it to other similar printers on the market, please visit total3dprinting.org. Thanks for watching!